Hello, and welcome back to the Moxie Shorts Sew Along. This is day two. If you need to catch up, you can visit my blog, sewingwithsarah.com, or my YouTube channel to view yesterday's video, which was day one. Yesterday, we talked about cutting out our Moxie Shorts. We talked about um, fitting changes that you might want to make or things to consider. Um, but today, we're gonna actually start constructing our shorts, and we're gonna be sewing the side seams of our shorts. So we're gonna sew the front and the back together. They're constructed in a really fun way so I'm excited to share that with you um, and it should go by pretty quickly today so um, we're ready to kind of hit the ground running and then tomorrow we're gonna get started on cutting our bias tape and creating the actual bias tape folding it in and, and ironing it and then applying it to our shorts um, so that's all gonna be tomorrow today should be pretty quick and easy and um, if you're ready we'll go ahead and get started okay welcome back to the moxie shorts sew along um, at this point, you should have um, all of your pieces cut out and just kind of have some initial ideas about fitting. Um, I would encourage you to always, you know, make your first pair of shorts as the pattern is drafted um, because these, these tend to be pretty spot on, but um, it's always good to just kind of make a first test pair and then see how that goes and then kind of keep some fitting potential fitting changes in mind. Um, so what we're gonna do today though, um, once you, since you have all of your pattern pieces cut out from yesterday, today we're just going to be sewing some of our um, front and back and upper back pieces together so that tomorrow we're ready for the binding, which is really gonna kinda be the bulk of this project. So the pieces that you need to have out are going to be the back piece, the upper back, which was cut on the fold, your two back pieces, your upper back cut on the fold, and then your two front pieces. So we're going to start out by pinning, taking one of those front pieces, and I actually find the right side really hard to tell on this stretch woven. Um, both the sides look pretty same, much the same, so I'm not gonna kinda stress over it. You're going to take, unfold your upper back piece, and the curve should be at the bottom. Okay, so this is the top, curves at the bottom. You're going to take one of those sides and place it right sides together with the side of your front piece. Now you'll notice that when you do that, I can get mine here, um, that you're probably going to have this little triangle that overhangs on the bottom. If you took a ruler and measured your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna see that it hits exactly right there. So it's gonna be perfect. Um, so don't worry, you wanna have that little overhang going on. So you're gonna go ahead and pin those together all the way up to the top. And there is kind of a little curve there, so just make sure that you're, you're keeping those matched up. And then you're going to come over to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm gonna take the front and match it up to that other side of the upper back. Again, keeping in mind that that little triangle overhang is a totally normal, appropriate thing for these shorts. and I think three clips is pretty short seam ought to do it. And then you're just gonna sew along here. If you are using a stretch woven, keep in mind that you should be finishing your seams. So I'm going to sew these with my sewing machine. Um, I'm gonna be using a um, like kind of a Microtex needle for this lightweight fabric. I think I have like maybe a, an 80 in there. Um, but you could go a little bit lighter if you wanted, like a 70. Um, so I'm going to do my seam, and then I'm going to go over to my serger and finish it with my serger and press it toward the back. Now, if you don't have a serger, that's okay. You can zigzag along the edge to finish your seam. Um, if you are using knit for your moxie shorts, knit doesn't fray. So finishing that seam is optional, and you could even do the main seam with a serger. But since I'm using the stretch woven, um, I prefer to sew with my sewing machine and then finish with a serger. The serge seam would probably hold up, but my active shorts get a lot of kind of use. So just want to make sure. So you should have something that looks like this. So I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine, 
And I'm going to sew it and um, finish the edges and press it toward the back and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Just wanted to come over and show you with my serger. Um, when I am serging the seam allowance, I'm not cutting anything off. I'm just doing like a quarter inch. So this was sewn at three eighths. I'm just doing a quarter inch seam allowance. I've also, on the side, um, you can see I've turned my differential feed down to one um, because this is um, this fabric does not have any stretch, vertical stretch. So it's just at one. Everything else remains the same, um, but I'm just going ahead and serging that. And then I'll cut this little triangle off when I'm done because that'll interfere with your binding if you don't. So I'm just going to go and pull it I'm pulling it off and then I've just that just you know surged the seam allowance and then I'm gonna press that toward the back um, so I thought that might be helpful in kind of showing you how that works and again if this was a knit I might just you know cut off that some of that seam allowance and just surge it at 3 8 and not worry about stitching the side seam separately um, with my sewing machine but since I'm doing it a little differently since I'm using the stretch woven um, I'm on my iron when I press I just want to show you um, it might be helpful I'm using like a silk setting I mean technically this is a synthetic fabric but I just feel like I need to get it a little bit warmer but you don't want to roast this fabric so don't make it too hot okay so I will be back to show you what to do next in just a second okay so once you've got that seam sewn and finished so you've finished it on the back and pressed on both sides attaching the upper back to the front on both sides. You have an option to top stitch this. Sometimes I've used my cover stitch and done kind of a reverse cover stitch. Um, there's a video tutorial for how to do that in the Super G Sew Along um, that's in, on my YouTube channel. But you're going to cut off that little corner. You're not going to top stitch. Go ahead and cut off that corner now. And the same thing on the other side. Make sure that it's pressed to the back so that you have a nice smooth curve. Now you're going to make this long piece even longer by sewing the back to the front. So this is the kind of a inner inseam here. So you're going to sew that, put that right sides together with your front and it's just a short little seam. So Put that right sides together with your front on that side and then come all the way down to the other front and do the same thing. Right sides together with that front. You'll notice it's kind of at an angle. That's okay. That's normal. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing there. So you're just going to sew, finish, and press. Um, so then when you're done with that, you should end up having a long piece that has the scoop. This is the back, upper back, or this is the lower back, this is the front. Here's the upper back. Here's the front. And then again, you have your other uh, lower back piece. So it's gonna end up being one long strip. And tomorrow, when we cut and apply our binding, that's what we're going to apply our binding for. Uh, too. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that and bring you back and just show you um, what you've got and then that's going to be it for today. Um, if you want to jump ahead you can always create your bias tape um, but if you need help walking, being walked through that step I'm happy to help you with that tomorrow. Um, so we'll get started on that then. Um, good job. Make sure you post your progress pictures. Let me know how it's going. If you struggled with any of this let me know. Um, I always like to see too if you've decided to add any decorative top stitching. Um, or what your plans for the binding are, if you're gonna be using the same color or a different color. Um, it's always fun to see what people do with these. Someone posted on the Facebook group the other day about how they used a contrast fabric for their upper back, and it looked amazing. Um, and honestly, that had just never occurred to me. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so, you know, there's just all kinds of options with these shorts and just to make them really fun. So um, we'll be back tomorrow, and um, hopefully I'll see your progress photos in the meantime. So just to finish this off here, um, I have sewn and finished and pressed that inner crotch seam toward the back, um, the lower back piece there, and I've also done that oops, all the way 
over here. So, like I said, tomorrow we're going to be applying our um, bias binding. This is really not nearly as bad as it sounds, um, especially if you're using a really well-behaved fabric. So, if you can do this te the technique we're going to learn tomorrow, you're going to be able to do things like the Havana dress, the Lily tank. Um, there's going to be a whole lot of options for you. So, um, I will see you back here tomorrow, um, and good job on your progress. Right now you just have this really cool long whale's tail of a thing. So enjoy.